Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. The four-jaw chuck is a love-hate relationship with most machinists, but I'm going to change that with this video. Well, today I'm going to show you how to set up a four-jaw chuck. I'm going to take all the mystery out of it, simplify it to where, with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to set up a four-jaw chuck within a few minutes. Let's first of all talk about the chuck itself. One of the distinguishing things is it has four jaws and on the face of it you have these different rings and you use those rings to help you orient your different jaws equally. The problem is they don't have a really great place to line them up. There's no marks on the side of the jaws, just you have these two corners and that's usually what you line up. Each jaw moves individually on a screw and of course you have a chuck wrench. So let's set up the piece of steel first. I'm just going to set it in and I'm just going to randomly run all of these to this first point and see how this looks. We just want to make sure it's secure. So that's step one. Step two is bring in your dial indicator. To me it's very critical where you place it. I like to have it on top because that's where my wrench fits. Some people work with the wrench on the side. If you do, put your gauge right on the side. Don't put it in a strange quadrant. Put it right where you're going to adjust the chuck. You'll see why in a little bit. Now we're going to spin this, see what kind of range we got. So I'm going to do what I call zeroing out the gauge. And what my goal is is to split the difference between the high and the low and have the average right at zero. So when the needle moves clockwise, that's your high. So let's find our high. You can see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to split the difference. Here's my low at 80, which is about 20 thousandths off. There's my high from zero, it's 20 thousandths off. Now I have a really great zero to work from. I'm going to go to my low and I'm going to just loosen it up just a bit, go to my high and tighten it up. See how I brought that into zero? Now we have a new high. When you're, when you're within about five thousandths, you can sometimes bring that in. Oh, that's doing pretty good. And with a little bit of finesse, you end up learning exactly how much to turn the screw for each jaw to get that lined up. Now my zero is not going to be perfect anymore, but you can see we're getting a really good average. So there we are within a thousandths of an inch. My material isn't that accurate. I can tell by the way the needle's moving around. There's definitely a flat spot in it. But you get the idea. It's three easy steps. We put the material in, do the first lineup of the jaws, bring the gauge in, zero the gauge, then anything on the right is to tighten, anything on the left is to loosen. We're going to loosen first. The reason you want to loosen first because when you tighten, you can only move it about five thousandths. So we want to loosen it, give it room, move the needle to zero, spin it, see how it looks. Another trick you got to watch out for is on older lathes or lathes that are Babbitt or bronze, have the bronze bushing, no matter which way you spin the chuck, your needle will be off. So always spin it in the same direction. Well, I hope you guys like this helpful hint. Uh, go out in the shop, give it a try. I think you'll uh, see how easy this really is. You can see I did that in a very short amount of time. If you guys like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also, I'd love to hear your comments about it. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.